Number 17. Consider the 52 kilogram mountain climber in figure 5.20. Letter A. Find the tension in the rope and the force that the mountain climber must exert with her feet on the vertical rock face um, to remain stationary. Assume that the force is exerted parallel to her legs. Also assume negligible force exerted by her arms. All right. So here what I did um, already was I just created a simple little coordinate system. All right. I got my axes set up here. Here's I'm going to talk about that being the center point of her mass. And now what I want to do is I want to detail all the forces based around this particular point. All right. So I'm going to make a nice system over here on the left hand side. So the tension force, right, is a force acting on her by the rope. And remember, those are the critical forces. We got to be thinking about forces acting on the climber, not by the climber. All right. Those are the forces we're detailing. We might have to find forces that the climber is exerting on other objects, but then we use Newton's third law to realize that there might be an equal but opposite force in the other direction. In any case, um, this angle in here is going to, well, the angle in here is going to be 31 degrees, okay? Uh, it's going to match this particular angle. Remember, if I had two parallel lines here and here, right? The angle right in here does match the angle right in here, right? That's like the alternate angle theorem or whatever the heck it is. Um, great. So that's one of the forces. The other force now is going to be this of her legs, right? Uh, how are we going to detail that in the picture? Remember, we're concerned about the, the force that the wall is exerting on her, right? So it should be pointing in this direction because that is the direction of the force that the wall uh, is exerting on her. So we're going to start the tip, though, at the origin and draw the tail, uh, excuse me, start the tail at the origin, draw the tip on out to the right-hand side, all right? So this is going to be 15 degrees in here, and this will be labeled F sub L for her force in her legs. This is going to be labeled T for tension. And then there's one other force. It's not in the picture. But remember, she's hanging. So what do you think it is? Gravity, right? There's the gravitational force, okay? So meaning in terms of her weight. Remember that weight is equal to mg. I can calculate that now, but let me hold off for the time being. Okay, so now notice the picture does it is not symmetric, but we have some negative x components here that will cancel some positive y components. Excuse me, positive x components here. We have some positive y components up here that will cancel some negative y components down here. So it looks like the system should be in equilibrium. All right, that's a good check because remember that they said she's stationary. So the force diagram has to, you know. Uh, resemble that somewhat. If you if you had an unbalanced, you know, if you had something like this, where you had a force out here, you had another vector here, and then down here, uh, doesn't look too balanced, right? What What's going to balance the negative x components over here? Nothing, right? So just keep that in mind. Okay, now it almost sounds like we don't have enough information to solve this, but we do, all right? We just need some structure to the problem. All right, so uh, when I need some structure and I know I'm dealing with components, I'm going to use my component table. Okay, so here's the component table. Just details X and Y components of all the vectors. Component table. Okay, let's create that here. And uh, and I detail this in some other videos. Also, I detail it actually very specifically as long as, um, along with some other problem-solving strategies in the book. Uh, we are writing together, my sister and myself, uh, about, it's called Glazer's Guide to Physics. Fastest way to an A. So feel free to check it out, all right? It should be out pretty soon. So here we have vector one, all right? Instead of vector one, though, what I'll call it, I'll call it, uh, you know, T for tension, okay? So tension is there. Uh, let's put the F2 vector here, and then we also have the weight vector, okay? Now, uh, this would also uh, sum to the resultant right and you have to remember the system is in equilibrium so is there are there any net forces no because there's no accelerations okay so the sum of all the forces better be zero so i know this call i know uh, the resultant values for certain because they said stationary okay so now let's take a look at t let's break it up into components all right here is the y component and here is the x component right so let's label them. Let's call this negative. Um, this will be negative uh, T sub X. And then the this component will be T sub Y. Okay. So how do I find 
how do I find a value for t sub x? Remember, uh, I have a triangle here. Here's the uh, angle uh, that we know. This is the side opposite of that angle. We do know the hypotenuse value of t. I mean, we don't know the value, but we have a variable there. So what I can do is simply uh, create an equation, right? Use sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle 31 will be equal to negative t sub x all over t. Solve it for t sub x, we get the negative t sine 31. Okay, so that value now we're going to plug into uh, my equation here. So this is negative for x, the x value of my t vector, negative t sine of 31. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for the y. Okay, except I realize that when I'm doing y now, I would be using cosine. Okay, so I never like to memorize, oh, you do, you know, cosine, you find x, and sine, you find y. Well, that's only when the angles are relative to the x-axis, okay? When the angles are now relative to the y-axis, it totally flips on its head. So um, you can set it all up by using cosine is equal to, you know, adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm just going to solve it right away. So t sub y should simply be the hypotenuse value t multiplied by cosine of the angle there of 31. So I'm gonna plug that in now, t cosine of 31. Then I have now my f sub two vector, right? So f sub two here, I'm gonna break that up into its components. So here, I'll put this in, um, you know, gre uh, green. Well, I'm not colorblind, but uh, that is yellow. So I'm gonna put this in yellow, so I'll call this f sub l in the x direction. Okay, and then I'll put the Y component here in black. All right, and we'll call that F, F sub L in the Y direction. So how would I create an, you know, an equation that relates uh, this X component with the overall resultant vector? Well, I'm gonna use cosine, right? Because this angle is adjacent to this side and, I, and this is the hypotenuse value and it's positive, right? So it would simply be F sub L uh, cosine of 15. Okay. And again, I'm trying to, I'm going a little quickly here. Um, if you had to think this out, create your equation, just like I did here for sine and then do the math. All right. Next, we would have now this vector, the Y component of F sub L, and that would simply be sine, right? So I had F sub L multiplied by sine of 15. Okay. Let's now move on to the weight. So here's the weight guys. And the weight is going to be negative, right? Because it's pointing down. Does it have any X component to it? Does this have any X component right here? No. So that's a big old zero. And then how about the value of it? Well, I could write it as MG or I could write it negative MG, that is, or I could write it as negative W. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to keep it easy for right now. Let's just do negative W. Okay. So here's the thing. Remember your component table. What this tells us is that we take this vector's x component, add it to this vector's x component, add it to this vector's x component, and that will equal this vector's x component, okay? So doing that on out now, I'm going to create my equations, all right? So this is for, uh, for the x part, I would have f sub l cosine of 15 minus, right, minus my t sine of 31 will equal what? it equals zero, right? So that's a big old zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for my y side, okay? We're gonna do t cosine of 31 plus f sub l sine of 15 minus w is equal to zero. All right, now take a step back and look at what you got. You have two equations, one, two, and two unknowns. Yes, yes, right? Why, why am I so excited? Because we can solve this, right? Two equations, two unknowns, we just do a system of equations, right, in terms of how to solve it. We, we think of them as, I should say, system of equations. The way to solve that would be to solve, you know, one of these equations for one variable and then, and then plug that result into the other. So I'm gonna solve this equation for, uh, I don't know, well, what am I? I'll solve it for F sub L, okay? So let's, let's solve it for F sub L. So basically if I'm solving it for this, right, I would add this component on over to the right-hand side and then divide out the whole left-hand side by the cosine of 15, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna write the result down here at the bottom just to save some space. So F sub L 
will equal t sine of 31 all over cosine of 15. Now what I can do is I can take this value, since this, is, this equals f sub l, and guess what? Plug it in right here for where that equals f sub l. All right, so now we're gonna write, I'll rewrite this equation. So t cosine of 31 plus t sine of 31 over cosine of 15, all right? Then multiplied by sine of 15 minus w is equal to zero. Alrighty, let's start now. Let's start combining some terms and, and uh, you know, doing some math here, okay? So I'm going to combine all this junk, all right? So hold on. Okay, we got the calculator. So let's do sine of 31 times sine of 15, and then take that and divide it by cosine of 15. And we get a value of uh, 0 0.138, okay? So this is... 0.138t, right? Now, also get rid of that cosine. By get rid of, I mean just find the value, all right? Cosine of 31. So we get, I think it'll be a little easier to see what to do next. 0.857t, okay? And then it's minus w is equal to zero. So notice I have, you know, common bases here, right? So I can add those two together. So 0.857 plus 0.138, and we get t, we get 0 0.995t, okay? This would be minus w, but I'm going to add the w on over, all right? So now it should be equal to, right, positive w. And remember, w is just the same thing as mg, okay? So I'm just going to erase the w now and just write mg, right? And then, just because I'm running out of space, and then remember, I can now plug in my mass that's given as 52 kilograms, all right? And uh, G is 9.8, all right? So that's what I'm going to do. So I got 52.0 kilograms times 9.8. How do I solve this now? 9.80, right? Divide out the 0.995. And we get now T, and we found the tension, right? So T is equal to 52 times 9.8 divided by 0.995. And T is equal to 512. So 512 newtons. That is T. Now, that's great. It says find the tension in the rope. So we just did that. And the force, meaning the F of in the legs. All right. So what we need to do now is very simple. Take this result and plug it in for T in this equation. And when you do that, guess what you find? F sub L. So let's do that, okay? So F sub L will equal, so simply do 512 times a sine of 31, and then divide that by cosine of 15. And we get 273. 273, that's a weird, funky looking three, 273 newtons, all right? And then we go, we found the tension and the force in the leg. So it almost seems like we don't have enough information, but once we set up the component table, all right, and then re realize that the system is stationary, so that means the sum of all the forces must equal zero. We can create equations, then we realize we have two equations with two unknowns, and then it's just math, all right? Great, so that takes care of part A, and then how about part B? It says, what is the minimum, minimum coefficient of friction between her shoes and the cliff? All right, so this is the point of interest now, between her shoes and the cliff. So what we have to do is we have to detail a free body diagram at this particular point. And watch, all I'm really gonna do, you know what, I'll just do it right here, all right? So here, I'll probably just have to shift it slightly. So let me just gather this on up. So we got the lasso, oh, whoops. Wait a second. Okay, I know what to do. Hold on one second, guys, I apologize. It's my OCD. <laughs> I have to make sure it's nice and even and pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put it right here, okay? That looks good to me. All right, so now notice I know this force vector, right? I see the force vector right here, and don't we know the value? Didn't we just find it? That's F sub L, 273. So this vector right here, I'm just gonna draw over it. Okay, that vector right there is 273. So 273, okay? Now, this vector has both an x and a y component to it, correct? It does, right? 
So let me just make it a little nicer. I'll put it right on over here. Okay, so we got this vector being 273. And when we're thinking about frictional force, right, we're thinking about, well, normal force and whatnot. What's the normal force? Right, normal force is the force that is directed out perpendicularly from the object in which friction is being created. So what I mean by that is right here, this vector right here represents the normal force. Now, that being said, that normal force is really simply the F, the, excuse me, the X component of this vector. Okay, so that's interesting. So how would we find then a form for normal force? How would we find that? Remember, this is 15 degrees. So that just means that the normal force is equal to 273 multiplied by cosine of 15. All right, that's cool. Now, um, I know for, in terms of this, you know, formula here, um, wh what do you call it? So they want to know the minimum coefficient of friction. So the minimum f uh, correlates with uh, mu sub k, right? Because that's kinetic friction. That uh, value of friction is the least, okay? Static friction is always greater. So knowing that, I write my formula here, force of kinetic friction is equal to mu sub k, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So I do know the normal force right now, right? The normal force is simply plug it into the calculator, 273 times cosine of 15. Oops, 273 times cosine of 15. We get a value of 264, all right? So 264 newtons. This is the normal force value that goes in here. Now, in order to find mu sub k, guess what we also need to know? The force of kinetic friction. Okay, so, well, what is that in the picture? Where is the force of kinetic friction here? Remember, her foot, if you think about it, her foot is going to want to slide down, right? Right, if you think about this, right, if you're, if you're her, your foot's going to slide down. Okay, so what's opposing the, that, what is, what's the force that's opposing her from slipping down? Well, look, it's a Y component, right? It's a pure Y component. Wait a minute. Go back to the picture over here, guys. Isn't there a Y component right in there? There it is. Okay. This right here represents the frictional force. All right. That is the pure Y component. So now, um, how do we solve for this? Well, we use sine now, right? So uh, the frictional force here is equal to then 273 multiplied by sine now of 15. So simply just plug that into your calculator. All right, so 273 sine 15, 273 times the sine of 15. So it comes out to be like 70.7 or so, right? 70.7. .7. And that is, let me just make sure, sine of 15, that looks good. Yeah, so that is in terms of Newtons, right? So guess what? Now we have this part to the formula. And great, now we can solve it, right? So we got, remember, force of kinetic friction here, which is the frictional force is 70.7. 70.7 is equal to mu sub k times 264. How do you solve for this? Simple, right? Divide out the 264 from both sides. 264. I'm going to just write my result on the top right-hand side just because it's getting a little cluttered over there. So now I get my mu sub k, or the coefficient, right, is going to be equal to 70.6 or sorry, 70.7 divided by 264. And we get a value of about 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.267 or 268, okay? 268. And that is, it's unit less, right? It, there's no unit because you divided Newton by Newton. All right, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Uh, hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.